the Jones brothers and Las Vegas aren't a good match. UFC heavyweight champion John Jones has had his troubles in Sin City in the past, and now his brother Chandler Jones has been arrested. The NFL defensive end currently under contract with the Las Vegas Raiders found himself in legal trouble earlier this week in Las Vegas after a concerning social media video surfaced online showing Jones in a disturbing state and breaking down on camera. Wait, they don't know what happened with Aaron Hernandez and Josh McDaniels. All right, yeah. Y'all thought Chico killed himself in jail? Y'all thought my nigga Chico killed himself in jail? <laughs> oh. The 33-year-old athlete was detained late Thursday night and is currently in custody at the Clark County Detention Center, as reported by TMZ Sports. Specifics regarding the circumstances of his arrest remain unclear, but the report indicates a potential breach of an existing restraining order. Moving on, Joe Rogan has given game-changing advice to Dana White, one that would shoot the UFC to greater heights of fame and dominance in the industry. But before we find out what Rogan said, please subscribe to Take Down MMA and turn on those notifications. Thank you. Joe Rogan is pushing the UFC to hold Muay Thai and kickboxing matches as well as mixed martial arts contests. The UFC's top broadcaster has been really impressed with one championship's format, and he wants the UFC to follow it as well. Everybody loves stand-up. When you're watching MMA, sometimes when people clinch, people go, oh, they want to see the crazy wars. These are the crazy wars all the time. That's the whole fight is crazy wars. Like, how is that not big? I brought it up with Dana. And I said, dude, I know you guys are into this slap fight thing, but I think, like, the thing that's untapped is kickboxing. And he was like, ah, but nobody liked that, that PK karate. I'm like, bro, that was in the 1980s. That was literally, they used to call it the kick of the 80s. Remember? Dana White doesn't seem too interested in it, but if the UFC promotes Muay Thai and kickboxing, Rogan thinks people will love it since the UFC has a huge market. Put the UFC machine behind it. If they put the UFC promotion machine behind high-level kickboxing and got just fucking, hey, we're going to sign the biggest fighters in the world. We're going to have UFC kickboxing. The U UFC should hire Michael Chabello and do a, a, a Muay Thai card. Dana, I'll commentate. You heard me. I'm commentated. Does, Let's go. Does Would you guys like to see kickboxing fights in the UFC? Moving on. Tyson Fury has dropped a major bombshell by accepting a title unification bout against Alexander Usyk, which will take place in December, although it could be pushed back to early next year. Fury is the WBC champion, and Usyk holds the WBA, WBO, and IBF titles. But before they meet in their title unifier, the Gypsy King must first come through a non-title bout against Francis Ngannou uninjured on October 28th in Riyadh. The fact that Fury has accepted a fight with Usyk despite his scheduled professional boxing bout against Nganu has had many scratching their heads. Nganu thinks Fury is underestimating him. Here's what the Cameroonian tweeted, quote, I have been underestimated and doubted before. We'll see. Fans think Fury's announcement is disrespectful towards Nganu. One says, quote, This just shows the disrespect towards Francis Nganu, that he is a side quest and has zero chance in October. What do you guys think? Conor McGregor says he owes Nate Diaz a trilogy. The two legends of the sport competed twice in their UFC careers with their scores tied at one apiece. A third fight would be massive, but that would only happen if Diaz re-signs with the UFC. He most recently competed in boxing, but McGregor wasn't very impressed with him. The Irishman thinks Diaz needs to return to MMA. Oh, it was not great, not great. I'd like to see him back in MMA, you know. I owe him a, re I owe him a fight. I owe Nate a fight, so I'm going to obligate that, you know. He gave me my rematch, I got the better of him, and I owe him the trilogy for sure. Moving on, Israel Adesanya is eyeing a quick turnaround after his loss to Sean Strickland at UFC 293. Strickland dominated Adesanya, winning four rounds to one to secure the title. The American landed the better shots and even produced the biggest moment of the fight by rocking Adesanya late in the first round. 
Adesanya's coach Eugene Barrowman thinks that was the turning point of the fight. I have no doubt that the, that the uh, I thought he did really well with a knockdown and coming back from it, but I have no doubt that you know anybody who's actually had a fight knows that uh, when you suffer a concussion and get knocked down like that, you, yeah, things happen over the whole duration of the fight. You just don't know what that knockdown does. Has it slowed your reactions down? Has it slowed your mental um, processing down? The knockdown and the concussion, they can do a myriad of things. So um, I have no doubt that that would have had some effect, and which is what it's meant to do. Nevertheless, Behrman still thinks Team Adesanya can turn things around in an immediate rematch. Behrman wants the second fight as soon as possible. I still believe to this day well, I can, we can turn that ar result around very fast. And we, I mean, this is not a normal athlete by any stretch. This is a unique athlete. And I'm not talking about his physical and mental capabilities. I'm talking about a hundred, over a hundred fights at the highest level. Who do you think would win a potential rematch between Sean Strickland and Israel Adesanya? Stephen Thompson has revealed why he turned down a fight against Ian Gary. And no, it's not because he's scared. In fact, Thompson is taking on a scarier guy in the division in the shape of Shavkat Rachmanov, who will enter his fight against the legendary Karatika with 17 wins and as many finishes. Before Rachmanov, though, Thompson was offered to fight rising Irish sensation Ian Gary, but he turned him down by saying that it was a lose-lose situation for him. I mean, I think that would be a very exciting fight with a, with a, with a guy with a similar style as me and, and a striker. But in order for me to be able to face those guys at the top, to be able to face the Leon Edwards, the, you know, the, the Kamaru Usmans, and I want to be the best MMA fighter I can. And everybody sees the fights that I had with, you know, Gilbert Burns and Bilal Muhammad. And to be honest with you, that was the first time that I have ever had anybody beat me that way. Mm -hmm. You know, just taking me down and holding me there and winning fights that way. So I had to go back and and, and kind of rethink things. And, and it's my goal to be at the top and to be the best MMA fighter I can. So there's been a lot that I've worked on. And to be able to fight somebody like Shavkat, Now's the time to show people that I can handle those type of fighters as well. This is it for me. Who do you think will win between Shavkat Rachmanov and Stephen Thompson at UFC 296? Alex Pereira doesn't want to move down to middleweight and take the belt from his friend Sean Strickland. The two competed at UFC 276, where Strickland was knocked out in half a round. Since then, they have become good friends who often train together. Strickland most recently helped Pereira prepare for his light heavyweight debut against Jan Blahovic, and it won't be surprising to see him help the Brazilian prepare for his upcoming light heavyweight title fight against Yuri Prohachka at UFC 295. Should Pereira win the light heavyweight belt, he won't go down to become a champ champ as long as Strickland is the champ. Here's what Pereira said, and I quote, It's not in my plans to move down to middleweight. My plan was, if Israel Adesanya was still the champ down there, maybe win the light heavyweight belt and make a fight with him. But now, no. Sean's my friend. Also, it's not a weight cut that I'm looking to do. I always made that weight, never missed weight or anything like that, but it is a hard weight cut, so right now it's not in my interest. Would you like to see a rematch between Sean Strickland and Alex Pereira? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. To stay up to date with the latest happenings in the world of mixed martial arts and boxing, please subscribe to Take Down MMA and turn on those notifications. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.